YouTube is filled with amazing ravioli recipes like ricotta and cheese, ricotta and spinach, and uh, another ricotta and spinach video. Um, oh look, uh, another one too. Um, uh, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna make my own ravioli and stuff it with Italian sausage. Okay, first things first, let's form the dough for our ravioli. Now, instead of doing it on the counter surface, I like to do it in a large bowl. Basically, it minimizes the mess and makes cleanup easier. Listen, I know that's not how your Nona does it, but your Nona isn't always correct, especially when it comes to her views on same-sex couples. Anyway, enough politics, let's begin. Add three cups of all-purpose flour. And let's crack in four eggs. Let's also add three teaspoons of olive oil. And half a teaspoon of salt. Now comes to mixing. Some people like to use their fingers. Some people like to use a regular spoon. Me, I like to use this barbecue fork right here. All right, first thing you gotta do, whisk the eggs together. And as you whisk around, slowly incorporate the flour. Okay, once it comes nice and tacky like this, ditch the fork and start folding the flour in on the dough. Okay, once it forms into a cohesive ball, let's, well, let me uh, rinse off the stuff first. Okay, you need your bare hands to know when it's ready. Keep kneading our little dough of pasta. Once it begins to stick a bit, throw it back into the flour. Okay, once it's only slightly sticky, think a uh, post-it note level of stickiness. Let's wrap some of this flour onto the surface. And knead it until it's nice and smooth. Okay, here's the sign your pasta is done. Push down on it, and it slowly springs back. All right, we can move on to the next step. All right, take some plastic wrap and wrap our pasta ball in it. And uh, put this in the fridge and let it rest for an hour. Okay, while the pasta dough rests, let's take care of the filling. Now, since this is a sausage video, you'll obviously need, duh, sausages. Okay, now most grocery stores already sell caseless sausages, but on the day I went, they did not. So obviously, using a sharp knife, You'll have to remove the casing, like so, like so. Let's get to cooking. So let's take one pound of Italian sausage and brown it in a large skillet. And I'm gonna give you guys a little help with the oil. Yeah, I know that's not a lot. Uh, a lot of fat's gonna render out of this. Okay, I'm not seeing any specks of raw meat. So let's move on to the next step. Next, place a colander within a large bowl. And we're going to separate the meat from the grease. Okay, now let that cool. Okay, once our sausage has cooled down, let's add it to a food processor. Then let's add half a cup of ricotta cheese. Half a cup of shredded mozzarella. One tablespoon of Parmesan. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. Pulse them until smooth. All right, let's transfer our filling to a bowl. To my invisible non-existent watch, I still got time, so. Okay, it's been an hour. Our pasta dough is nice, malleable, and it's ready for the pasta roller. Now, you can do it by hand with a rolling pin, but this just gives you much cleaner results. But if you want one, I'll leave a link to this in the description. Or maybe you can be lucky like me and come across these at a yard sale for three bucks. Anyway, enough of my life story. Let us begin. Okay, take our ball, cut it into four equal pieces, 
And uh, don't be afraid of using too much flour because trust me, pasta dough is stickier than a teenage boy's bedroom. Okay, let's flatten this out enough. Roll it through our pasta machine. Fold it into thirds. Oh, and uh, make sure it's on its widest setting. What we're doing is called laminating the dough. Basically, it's we're gonna make it nice and square. All right, once more. Okay, and now we can begin our thinning process. So, let's go one more thin this setting down. All right, next setting, let's go. Okay, this is getting quite long, so I'm gonna cut this in half, make this easier. And we're gonna run it through the second thinnest setting. For my pasta machine, that's a six. All right, let's wear this off. And uh, just put the scraps in a separate pile. We'll roll these out later. Okay, next let's grab a teaspoon's worth of our filling and make sure we give it a nice inch of space on all sides. Again, teaspoon size, a little bit of space between the fillings. Okay, let's, right next, let's wet our finger a bit and just paint on our water. Freaking start over. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, let's resume. So with our meat laid out, let's fold over our pasta dough. All right, and uh, squeeze out any air. Next, grab yourself a ravioli cutter. and give them their iconic ravioli shape. And bada boom, these are ready for a pot of boiling water. Speaking of which, I have on the stove a pot of water, which has yet to come to a boil, and straight side of the pan, where we will make our sauce. In fact, let's get started on that now. Put this over medium high heat. And have that teased up, let's toss in some olive oil. All right, after that heats up a bit, let's toss in half an onion diced. A teaspoon and a half of dried oregano. A teaspoon and a half of dried basil. And you know what, I'm feeling frisky. A quarter teaspoon of red chili pepper. And let's season everything with a teaspoon and a half of salt. Cook until the onions turn translucent slightly. Okay, once the onions soften up a bit, let's add seven cloves of minced garlic. Okay, once we saute the harsh edge off the garlic, let's add three and a half ounces of tomato paste. Uh, cook until the tomato paste changes color. Okay, our proto sauce has deepened in color a bit. And then let's add one cup of white wine. And uh, keep stirring until you cook off most of the alcohol. You can tell when the sauce is cooked off when you get a nice whiff of it and you don't go cross-eyed while leaning over to one side. Okay, most of the alcohol is cooked off. Let's add our final ingredient, half a cup of heavy cream. Okay, our water has fully come to a boil. Let's add our raviolis. And when they rise to the top, they're done. So, grabbing a slotted spoon, let's transfer our olis into our sauce. And do the same with the next couple batches. Okay, let's throw our raviolis in. And plate up. Sprinkle on some Parmesan cheese. 
and manja. Okay, sure, this is one of my more labor-intensive dishes, but it's so damn good. Yeah, I know you were expecting a joke. Like I said, labor-intensive, I'm pooped. This has been Chase Cutting Kitchen. I'm CRJ, making cooking fun and meaning it this time. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, smash the like button. If you really like the video, become a subscriber and hit the bell notification icon. I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and support me on Patreon. Geez, even with the AC on, I'm still sweating up a storm.